What's up guys, this is the real Quaid here. Uh, this is actually going to be a battle video of the first round of our generation tournament. So what we've done here is uh, we basically the tournament is set up in such a way that you build your team, but the team that you build is entirely constricted to a single generation of your choosing, which is nice. Um, so I have chosen the first generation. This battle is against Chill84, who has also chosen the first generation. So we're each, uh, you know, confined to the classic Pokemon we all grew up and saw for the first time and know and love and all those. So this is uh, my highly experimental Sun Team mishmash that I've got going on. Um, I The quality on this isn't what I had been doing recently, but I had a lot of videos and I didn't want to wait to get them from the emulator. I just wanted to sort of get them as I go because uh, hopefully we'll have uh, a number of videos. I wanna, I'm want i going to do my whole run through the tournament just because the team I'm running is so weird. Um, and I wasn't sure how many of those battles I'm going to have, so I wanted to get, you know, get them out there as fast as I can. So I'm going to be making these before the tournament's over, basically as I do them. And then uh, whenever it becomes available to post them based on, you know, who's in the battle and who's still in the tournament, then I'll post them then. But in any case, um, he's got a chill here. He has a very interesting team in the fact that he's got two Pokemon that are not fully evolved. So that's a little... Uh, it puts me sort of on edge because I have no idea what he's running. Um, I do notice that... He, well, I thought he had no rapid spinners. Of course, I wasn't thinking of War Turtle as a rapid spinner. So uh, I decided to lead with my Aerodactyl. Let's just get this going here. Um, and then it'll catch up. I decided to lead with Aerodactyl and get the rocks up just to get that residual damage. Because um, also, he doesn't have anybody who can really taunt Aerodactyl or is any threat to him in any sort of meaningful way. So. He leads with his Mew. I have no idea what to expect. That's the, you know, the issue when you're facing a Mew. So I just set up the rocks right away. That's just fine. He goes for a Will-O-Wisp. Unfortunately, he misses. In the long run, it wouldn't have mattered based on what happened in the rest of the battle. But uh, it's just unfortunate when he does that. So I see the Will-O-Wisp. I'm thinking he's probably going to try it again, right? So I switch to Ninetales. In addition to getting the sun out there, which he has no way of stopping, Ninetales is immune to the Will-O-Wisp, so that's a, a nice logical switch. So he switches his Mew, brings out his Wartortle, which I wasn't really expecting, but that's okay. Uh, I was kind of anticipating something weird happening, so I just went for the substitute, keep myself healthy. Um, you know, it's just a lot safer, and then I can see what he brings out and react accordingly, so... War Turtles out there. There's the Rapid Spin. As soon as he did that, I was like, oh, duh, he learns Rapid Spin, of course. So I felt kind of stupid at that point, but that's okay. It did a little bit of damage. I actually went for a Roar. I wanted to get some Shuffle out there and, and rack up the Stealth Rocks damage. Of course, it didn't look out, turn out that way, so he brings out his Snorlax. Awesome nickname, by the way. I really appreciate the, uh, that really, you know, the nostalgia of that nickname is awesome, so... Go for a Will-O-Wisp of my own against Snorlax. I'm assuming his Snorlax has thick fat, so my fire attacks are going to be resisted by it. So I'll just weaken him with whatever he's got. Snorlax doesn't have any special attack, so any offense it will be doing is now crippled thanks to the burn. But even still, after his return is enough to take out my substitute pretty easily. So the burn is going to start ticking away. I know I'm faster than he is, and I don't know what he's going to do now that he knows he's burned. So I went for another sub thinking maybe he'd go for a switch, maybe, I don't know. So he goes for another return, which is going to knock out my sub once again. Um, and we're sort of chipping away at each other. The burn damage is, te is, you know, reaching some more and more damage on him. I'm losing gradually more health from the substitutes that will break. So I kind of have had enough. I said, well, if we're just going to be setting up, let me actually set up something that's useful. So I switched to my Tentacruel, trying to get some Toxic Spikes up there. He actually switches as well and goes into his Slowbro. I was a little bit afraid of a Psy Shock here, but I knew I was faster, so I, at the very least I'd get one set of Toxic Spikes up, which is really going to help because his team is really bulky. But he goes for a Trick Room. Um, so my team is very fast now that the sun is up. Um, my whole team pretty much is outsped by his whole team for the most part at this point. So he actually switches to his Marowak. 
which is gonna get poisoned. I was kind of anticipating a switch. I should have gone for the Ice Beam because Ice Beam actually does more in the sun than Skull does, but I was kind of hoping maybe if he was kept Slowbro in, I was kind of hoping for a burn on that, but get a little bit more damage on Marowak. So I'm expecting an Earthquake here, or a Bone Meringue, because um, it's going to be super effective against Tentacruel, so go for the Aerodactyl switch, try to get a free one. He actually predicts quite well, goes for a Stone Edge. That's going to destroy Aerodactyl real easily. Um, he does have a Focus Sash, so he will survive, but with the Trick Room, Marowak is going to outspeed Aerodactyl here, and he's pretty much useless, and I'm, I basically at this point offer him up. Uh, because Marowak is going to be able to one-shot pretty much everybody on my team at this point in the Trick Room. So, maybe hoping he actually switched to an Earthquake or something silly. Um, so you see why the, the Mist Burn doesn't really have an impact here. I sort of sacrificed Aerodactyl anyway. Uh, and then with what I lead out here, you'll see uh, why it doesn't matter. So I switch in to my Kangaskhan, who is a level 1 Fear Kangaskhan. The most insulting of all the, uh, the battle tactics. So he's going to get Endeavored. The knockoff will fire, it doesn't matter, because the focus sash will trigger before the knockoff effect takes place. And thanks to the toxic spikes, Marowak goes down, only taking out one of my Pokemon. So, all things considered, that was relatively successful. Now, you'd think my Kangaskhan is largely useless at this point, but I know he has Trick Room still in play. And I actually opt to keep Kangaskhan alive in the off chance that... Um, the Trick Room actually happens, and my speed advantage becomes nullified. If the Trick Room happens, then my Kangaskhan will go first. He'll be able to endeavor anything he has, which will put me in great position to finish it off, whatever it is, if it doesn't get finished off by the poison. Now that the Toxic Spikes are out there, of course, that's going to help it even more. So, I'm expecting War Turtle to spin him away. I forgot that I'm faster. Forgot Slash wasn't paying attention. So I went for another one. He actually goes for a Seismic Toss. Uh, or no, that's the next turn. I set up, basically, I'm not afraid of any offense War Turtle's going to come at me with. So I'm sort of forcing the issue, and I continue to use Toxic Spikes, even though he will continue to spin them away, because War Turtle has no form of recovery, and the poison damage that he has is going to continue chipping away at him gradually. And if he keeps using Rapid Spin, Rapid Spin does nothing to Tentacruel. Um, he, he actually heals more up from the leftovers than he gets damage from the Rapid Spin, so... I'm perfectly fine with continuing to throw Toxic Spikes out there and uh, just keep the damage going that way. So he brings out his Haunter. I had no idea what to expect with this. I found it weird that he actually went with a Haunter and not a Gengar. Um, possibly, I don't think he has any OUs other than, or Mew's not even OU, so he could, definitely could have fit him on his team. But So he's going for Substitutes. Um, Haunter's pretty fast. He's outspeeding my Tentacruel here whose base speed is naturally quite high, but Haunter's is as well. But his defenses are really bad, so the Substitute, even though the Scald in the Sun is weaker than Ice Beam, um, the Substitute fades in one shot. So I basically I have no idea what he's planning to do with this Haunter, so I'm content to continue chipping away at it with my offensive choice, which for now is Scald. So that sub is going to fade. At the, in the meantime, of course, Tentacruel is healing up quite nicely. Um, getting back up to full almost. So I'm in pretty good position right now. There's another sub. Again, at this point, I'm like, I have no idea what his plan is because I've never faced a Haunter in competitive battles before. Uh, not totally sure what kind of set it had. I figured it had some kind of Eviolite, maybe like a bulky type set or something. I had no idea. But anyway, Tentacruel's back up to full. I figure I'll be able to finish him off pretty easily. He goes for the paint split, and all of a sudden it makes sense. I'm like, okay, I, can see, I see what he's doing here. Um, so it, it does a decent amount to Tentacruel, but I was actually, I was going for a Scald again. I again, I should have gone for an Ice Beam, but, uh, learning here. In the future battles, you'll see me using Ice Beam more often, I'm sure, now that I've seen this through. I also was kind of hoping for a Burn, just to get that annoyance sub-pain split out of the way. So he goes for Hidden Power. I'm assuming this is Hidden Power Fire, because it's not very effective on me. And I don't think it would be Hidden Power Fighting or Hidden Power Water. Might be Hidden Bower Fighting, actually, but I did go for an Ice Beam there. I managed to crit, which is a little unfortunate, but like I said, Haunter really has no way of smashing Tentacruel. His only real offense against it is Pain Split, and Tentacruel will be able to take him down whenever he gets low enough anyway. So he brings back his War Turtle again. I decide the spikes are already out there. I'll just go for some offense. Ch you know, I'll lower the amount of 
burns, I need to the poison to tick away. So the rapid spin knocks them away again. I'm assuming he just wants to clear the field for whatever he's going to send in next. Because uh, I'm sure he knows that I'm going to use Toxic Spikes immediately again. Because like I said, I have no fear of what War Turtle is going to come at me with. So he does send out his Mew. I, of course, go for the Toxic Spikes. Again, I'm a little unsure what this Mew has. The only thing I've seen it use is Will-O-Wisp. So that being the case, I opt to switch out my Tentacruel, fearing a Psychic or something, bring out my... Uh, Nine Tails. He does go for the Will O Wisp again. That makes me feel pretty good. It's a nice switch. So, uh, again, I have no idea what this thing is running. So he goes for a taunt. I believe I was going for a sub at this point just because I had no idea. So, taunt makes sense. It's going to shut down Nine Tails pretty good. So, yeah, there's the sub. Didn't work. So, that's a pretty good play. So I know he's got uh, Will-O-Wisp and Taunt, it's probably some kind of weird support Mew, and then I see the Seismic Toss, and I'm thinking, yes, this is my opening. If he had a Psychic Attack, he would have used it, um, because his, you know, he gets the stab on it, it would hit pretty good, but I see the Seismic Toss, and I know that that's his attack. He doesn't have an, uh, whatever his other move is, probably, um, maybe Stealth Rocks, something, whatever it is, it's not offensive, so I know that this Mew is going to really help me out, um because I have no... Oh, I actually, I, I, I uh, predicted that it was Recover, that I figured he's got some kind of recovery move. So I'm going to start... I keep chipping away the Flamethrower in the Sun with the Stab. That does pretty good damage to him. I see he's getting low. Uh, the Leftovers are helping. Um, but again, like I said, I know his set now. I know the four moves he has, and I know what I can do to beat it. So luckily my Taunt wore off in this case. I almost went for a Will-O-Wisp, but I'm glad I didn't because he taunts me again, which gives me a free turn of another Flamethrower and additional damage. I know if he would have Seismic tossed me, I would have been in somewhat bad shape, but I would have gladly sacrificed Ninetales at this point. So he's pretty low, and he is faster than me, so I'm expecting a Recover at this point, and this is where the battle basically opens wide up, because I kind of expect this. So I actually switch out my Nine Tails, I bring in the, uh, this is basically what the team is built around, is this Chlorophyll Victory Bell. So there's the Soft Boiled, I was like, yes, I got him. I mean, I took a little bit of a risk sending out Victory Bell against a Will-O-Wisp Mew, but I figured I would be okay. Um, it would hamper my Leaf Blade but it wouldn't affect my Weather Ball or my Sludge Bomb's power. And uh, at plus two, those are going to destroy a lot of what he has left. So it was worth the risk of going for a growth and seeing what he does. And he actually is... he I don't know if he didn't realize that I was Chlorophyll. So I'm actually, at the moment, this Victory Bell is faster than anything that doesn't have a Choice Scarf. Um, so the Taunt, of course, is ineffective now that I'm already at plus two. So he, he goes for, uh, he brings out his War Turtle, thinking maybe I was, I don't know what he was thinking. I think at this point he knows it's over. So the Leaf Blade's going to come in. It's going to destroy War Turtle, even with the Eviolite, plus two, Victory Bell. Um, War Turtle's going to go down easily. So the Life Orb damage takes a little bit, but that's, I'm fine with that. He goes for his Snorlax. I know the Snorlax is much more specially bulky than he is physically, so again I go for a Leaf Blade. This is one I don't. I'm not convinced that uh, Weather Ball would have actually. I would have to use Sludge Bomb because Weather Ball he resists Weather Ball with Thick Fat. So um, I go for the Leaf Blade. It actually manages to finish off his Snorlax, which is great. Um, then he brings out his Slowbro again. This is another one I wasn't sure about because Slowbro is really physically defensive. Um, so oh, what's going on with my video here? My computer is slowing down. Um, so the Leaf Blade is going to take down Slowbro in one shot. No problem. I wasn't sure, because like I said, his, his spe he was full health and his physical defense is much higher than his special defense. So I wasn't totally sure that this would work the way I expected, but it ends up doing so. Victory Bell's got a clean sweep going. The taunt wears off, not that it matters, because I'm not going to growth again. I don't really need it. And there's his Mew. I already know it. it's only got Seismic Toss. It doesn't have Psychic. So, uh... I'm not worried. I've got, it, you know, two attacks, two full seismic tosses to knock him out. The Leaf Blade doesn't manage to finish him. I opted to do the Leaf Blade over Weather Ball because uh, I saw that Ninetales wasn't doing very much with its flamethrower, so I figured he was pretty specially bulky. But uh, that's okay. So it does enough damage that another Leaf Blade is just going to knock it out. 
you know, finish the job here relatively simply. And, uh, there you go. I believe that's it. So, good game to chill. My Fear Kangaskhan is knockout count is one, which is pretty much higher than uh, I expected it to be at this point. Um, and I could have not, like I said, I kept him around for the sake of the Trick Room. If Trick Room had come into play again, I had uh, an option to take care of it. Didn't come down to that, thankfully. So um, that's all I've got for this one. That's This is the first round, so we've got a couple more to go. Um, at this at the point I'm recording this audio, I'm actually 2-0 and right now, so I'll have at least two more battles for you guys no matter what. So uh, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.